Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Nonprofit U, a forum where nonprofit stakeholders can share lessons learned and discuss the latest developments in the industry. My name is Valerie Leonard, your host. I'm a consultant to nonprofits, and I specialize in community and organizational development. I work with nonprofit organizations to help them make a stronger impact to their clients and communities. You can find Nonprofit U on Facebook and Twitter, and I encourage you to follow us and to comment early and often using today's hashtags, Nonprofit U, Oracle NetSuite, and Technology for Mission Impact. You can also leave comments on blogtalkradio.com forward slash nonprofit underscore you. The chat room is open, and you can post comments and questions. In order to use the chat room, however, you must open a listener-only account, and you'll find a link to open the account on the page for this episode. In fact, it's right up under the chat room. You can also email me questions at consulting at ValerieFLeonard.com. We'll be taking questions by phone and from our chat room, 30-minute mark or so. The call-in number is 347-884-8121. Again, that number is 347-884-8121. Today's topic is using technology to measure mission impact. We'll talk about Oracle NetSuite's tools for measuring financial and social impact, their programs for product donations and capacity building, and how organizations may apply. Again, we encourage you to call in with questions at about the 30-minute mark. You can start posting in the chat room and emailing questions now if you'd like. Again, my email address is consulting at valueofleonard.com. And if you want to participate in the live chat, you must open an account, and the link is found on the episode page. Again, the call-in number is 347-884-8121. Nonprofit and community development professionals are especially encouraged to call in and share your stories and strategies. Peggy Duvet, she's an international thought leader in technology and social change and women's leadership. As Oracle NetSuite's Senior Director of Social Impact, Peggy is responsible for the overall strategy of that group, which includes not only their technology donation program, but also their pro bono services. Prior to joining Oracle NetSuite, Peggy was the executive director of Wiser Earth. In this capacity, she was responsible for growing an online community of over 80,000 members from all over the world, working towards sustainability and social justice issues. Peggy earned an MBA with honors in management and sustainability from San Francisco State University. So this is very, very impressive. Peggy, and I thank you so much for being with us today. It's an honor and a privilege to have you on the show. And before we get started, can you give us an overview of Oracle NetSuite and tell us how you came to work for them? Absolutely. Well, thank you, Valerie, for this wonderful introduction. I'm thrilled to be a part of this podcast. And I hear this. Uh, you have listeners from 67 countries So being an international citizen myself, I must say hello, bonjour, konnichiwa, hola. Um, It's so exciting um, to have that reach. Um, My journey in the nonprofit sector started around um, 15 years ago when I worked for a very small nonprofit in uh, California, uh, USA. Um, We're doing work towards sustainability and social justice. Um, and as I learned more about the nonprofit sector and, and, and grew through my program, I became the executive director and, and was quite overwhelmed at the time by all the possibilities around technology uh, for social change. Um, our mission was very simple. We wanted to connect and collaborate mm-hmm. all the nonprofits in the world working towards sustainability and social justice issue. So think about that um, massive mission. We needed technology uh, to undertake that. Uh, So we did take multiple, you know, decided to select um, a few softwares. 
Um, and I can't tell you how hard it was at time when it was time to consolidate the financials at the end of quarter, uh, when it was time for me to present uh, my reports to the board. Um, we spent quite a lot of hours trying to consolidate the kind of my, you know, the, the, how many donors I had, how many unique donors, and how much money we had for this program. So QuickBook would tell me something, and then my CRM would tell me something. Um, so um, when I decided to basically close my nonprofit at the time and was ex exploring new uh, venues for social change, I was very intrigued by the uh, intersection of technology and social change. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, so what would it look like if I explored you know, a different vehicle and maybe not a 501c3? And that's what landed me Oracle NetSuite. Um, I'm going to assume everybody knows who Oracle are. We're one of the tech leading company in the world. Uh, and NetSuite got acquired by Oracle around a year and a half ago. And what is NetSuite? Um, NetSuite is a unified cloud technology solution where basically mm -hmm. a nonprofit can manage the entire operations. So I'm going to repeat that, maybe be simplify it. But basically, we are okay. one, one cloud technology where you could run all of your operations. So think, oh. you know, Peggy, when she was at Wiser Earth, had multiple systems. Um, it takes a lot of time, and we know how time mm -hmm. um, is important in the nonprofit sector, right? It, it's a high currency. Um, so it really, NetSuite really helps ease the burden of maintaining multiple systems and allowing us to focus on your core mission. And um, mm -hmm. as you can hear in my, in my voice, you know, whether your mission is to help a local community, or to provide um, international outreach, right, for global cause. Mm -hmm. um, all nonprofit leaders, um, you know, face tremendous complexity and operational challenges. Um, and I think it'd be fair as well, um, you know, to show that we all we all use these great applications as well. Sometimes just spreadsheets, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because some of the tools are not affordable. Um, right. So with NetSuite, we really, with Oracle NetSuite, we really dedicated to put our resources. Uh, in helping uh, nonprofits of all size uh, to leverage our cloud technology uh, so people can focus on their mission and not on the back end operations. Mm -hmm. you know, it was so funny. I listened to you talk about some of the experiences you had you know, managing a small nonprofit, and it brought back memories and some nightmares <laughs> of, of, you know, for myself when I had to run a small nonprofit and many of the tools that we use were, you know, relatively primitive. In fact, I don't even think at the time we had the technology in place to easily uh, track outcomes. And, and I was really, really excited. The way I stumbled upon your software solutions, I actually teach operations at the University of Illinois in Chicago, you know, for nonprofits, and I was looking for performance management tools. And then, you know, I stumbled upon, you know, some articles that, you know, people within your company wrote, and then, you know, the solution with NetSuite, and we'll talk more about that. But I can definitely say from experience, it, it's not fun, you know, using Excel spreadsheets to try to track, you know, something as dynamic as outcomes. But, you know, that's, that's more, um, we'll talk about that more. Um, senior Director of Social Impact. So what is the exact function of the social impact division? Mm, that's an excellent question. Um, so my group focuses on leveraging a company's assets. Um, and when I think of assets in my current world, it's uh, basically our expertise, our product, and our people. Mm -hmm. um, and what we do this is we leverage those assets to accelerate the social uh, impact of nonprofits and social enterprises all around the world. Um, and again, it's also regardless of the ability to pay. It's very important for us to be able to share that we support nonprofits of all size. Because whether you're a mm -hmm. small mom and pap nonprofit and you have a very tiny budget or you're a big one, you would be able to leverage all the dealing practices that we've put together over the years by serving so many nonprofits. Um, so if you think of what does this all mean, uh, you know, what do we do in the social impact division on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, we have kind of three pillars that drives us. The first one, mm -hmm. is, and what we know the most for, is our technology donation. Um, 
mm-hmm. which you know we we donate a software to um, you know a technology so a software donation uh, for eligible nonprofits and social enterprises all around the world. Um, you know, okay. it's very standard. You know, a lot of leading technology companies do that. Uh, we serve over a thousand nonprofits right now globally, and I think we you know if you map. Um, <clears throat> Our impact, it's worth around $70 million worth of software donation that we've given away so far. Uh, but I think what's unique and what intrigued me tremendously when I explored this new opportunity in my own career is the fact that we were not just in the business of um, giving away your technology, but we were also in the business of building capacity. And um, mm-hmm. so a sweet pro bono program, which is your signature program, is about how do you ensure once you give away technology that the nonprofit leaders – actually leveraging that technology for the mission, right? So mm-hmm. what we do is we connect the nonprofits in a software donation program with our NETSID employees so they can oh, give away it. their time and expertise. Um, so mm-hmm. to date, we've given around 1.5 million of pro bono hours to our social impact recipients. Wow. Um, which is around worth 15,000 um, hours of pro bono. Um, and I was trying to think of an example mm-hmm. to share to make it very concrete, but um, uh, so obviously our work is global, and I remember being super touched by um, Rise Against Anger Philippines. Do you know those, this organization? Um, you know, they, no, the mission I'm is to, familiar. yeah, so they, you know, they, they want to obviously, you know, end hunger, uh, you know, mm-hmm. in their lifespan, which is a pretty ambitious mission. Um, yes. to provide food and life-saving aid to um, communities in, in the Philippines. So I think they've, they've provided around 3 million meals to date since they got incorporated in about wow. five years. So, you know, pretty s- substantial, right? Um, so they provide meals to uh, the most needed uh, individuals in the Philippines. Um, so they came to us, you know, around three years ago, interested in uh, exploring um, NetSuite, what we call NetSuite. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've identified that it was a great match. They got into a software technology pro, um, program. Um, and since then, I've, I've learned to champion the technology through the pro bono. So they've had maybe two different interventions in the last two years where our employees mm-hmm. have helped them work on their dashboard and also implement, you know, help with the implementation piece. But I think what's even super more exciting as we think about what the, how that really helps the mission is um, we had a build a fund for good last November in Manila, mm-hmm. Philippines, um, and they came here and were able to uh, face-to-face um, interact with their employees. We were able to literally work on the last production and solve kind of day-to-day operations. Uh, so imagine mm-hmm. to, have, to be able to talk to experts uh, who dedicate their whole day uh, to help you. Um, and it might not be so sexy, uh, you know, to work a lot of hours on a on a software, uh, but at the end, it mm-hmm. saves uh, you know it saves a lot of time for those nonprofits. So I'm super proud mm-hmm. of our pro bono program and how it's helping. Um, and then finally, a third pillar is what we call food capacity, is where we um, provide educational offerings, again mm-hmm. to help uh, that effective use, so nonprofits can um, focus on their programs and not on the back end. So we have a financial related program that's a 12-week self-implementation cohort for our, our mm-hmm. newest recipients. Uh, we literally, they, they are being led through a, a cohort of leading practices that help them pre-configure uh, their software so they can start using uh, NetSuite for um, their day-to-day financial operations. Oh, that is exciting. That is really exciting. So have any of these organizations that you've worked with, have they been able to actually improve their ability to to uh, show impact? You know, do they write you back and say as a result of you know, using NetSuite, we've been able to demonstrate XYZ impact and this is re- – resulted in ABC increases in funding. Have, have you heard any of those stories yet? Of course, all of them. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's like, and, no, we have, we have some amazing stories, but I want to be um, authentic as I talk, which is um, as technology, as, as, as the goal is indeed to help 
a link, you know, uh, programs with actual measurement and impact. You know, it, it's not mm-hmm. always successful. It, it takes a lot mm-hmm. of efforts to undertake any technology change. Um, so as I will share now our successful stories, I can also uh, share a lot of countless stories where people have been less successful. Um, when you think mm-hmm. of technology implementation, you know, I think of it as three pillars. I think of expertise, time, and money. Um, so mm-hmm. if one has the money, you know, they obviously can pay for implementation. But if you don't have money, you have time and expertise. Um, and in the nonprofit sector, as, as leaders, we don't always have the expertise when it comes to technology. Uh, when I first joined Wiser, I didn't know much about it. And imagine here I was in the Bay Area in California, the hub for technology. Oh, wow. I had nonprofit, bo- mm-hmm. nonprofit boards that wanted me to adapt all the newest technology. So uh, I will give a caveat that technology is only relevant if it's solving the problem that you're ready to solve today. right? If one mm-hmm. is not ready... Um, to save time in their day-to-day uh, operations. Uh, if one is working fine with their um, spreadsheet, then I think that's fine. But um, if a leader is ready to undertake the technology change to save um, you know, on the day-to-day operation, but also to be able to enhance mm-hmm. the operation, then it gets exciting. So um, as I think about tracking outcomes and financial performance, uh, a story that came to mind as you were sharing this question was, the Salmon Community uh, Scotland. So it's a, it's a non-profit that helps homeless in um, Western Scotland, um, in mm-hmm. Europe, and they provide shelters, they provide food, and basically want to give, you know, better lives to those individuals mm-hmm. in need. Um, they serve around 3,000 individuals, I think, with either emergency needs or long-term housing as well as care mm-hmm. counseling. So, you know, a typical shelter, if you will. Uh, but I think what was unique about how um, they use NetSuite is by starting putting the, the financials and using NetSuite not only for the day-to-day operation, but also for the inventory management. Um, they were able to um, find out that 75% of um, the individuals they were serving uh, were heavily smokers. So that wow. triggered so that... That data allowed them to then um, create an initiative around that element. Um, so I, I think the um, I remember when we had talked to um, I think it was Hug Hill, the director of a service uh, as a Simon Committee uh, Scotland, and we were asking him about like how would you share how how has this would help you, and I think his response was it really helped us identify new issues, investigate new issues around health and financial inclusion and different approaches to address these issues that we would not have thought of if we didn't have the data all together in one place. Um, so I would say, again, you know, it's not easy. It's a big endeavor to try to collect both your financial data and your program data together. But if, if you mm-hmm. put resources behind it, there's no doubt that um, it can, you know, allow you to uh, better serve your audience, whoever that might be. Mm-hmm. You know, for the Summer mm-hmm. Committee of Scotland, it's obviously those, um, those homeless people in needs, mm-hmm. um, but not uh, driving uh, much more impact in that case. Yeah, I think it's very powerful if you can track the financial impact as well as the programmatic impact. You know, because one of the questions invariably that funders want to know is, okay, so how much is it costing us per unit of outcome? You, you know what I mean? Not, not always per unit of output, but, you know, they want to know how much is it costing to impact a, a person. And it's very hard, I think, to do that when you're using multiple tools, you know, in, in different spreadsheets and worksheets and, and all that good stuff. Um, if you have a way to you know, to integrate all of that, I think that's very, very powerful, and I think it would help organizations to really set themselves apart, like the organizations that you know that you're working with. Okay, so I want to remind our listening audience that you're listening to Nonprofit You, and we're speaking with Peggy Duvet. Peggy is the Senior Director of Social Impact for Oracle NetSuite. 
We'll take questions from our listening audience and chat room at about the 30-minute mark. The call-in number is 347-884-8121. Again, that number is 347-884-8121. I also want to let you know about the upcoming launch of Nonprofit Utopia, the ideal community for emerging nonprofit leaders. We'll be kicking off from Blue 1647 here in Chicago on June 26, 2018, from 6.30 p.m. until 8.30 p.m. Blue 1647 is located at 2150 South Canal Port in Chicago. And we'll also be live streaming on Facebook for those of you who can't make it in person. And Peggy, you're more than welcome to attend if you can. And I extend the same invitation to our listeners as we speak. Okay, so I have a link to the landing page in the comment section for your further information. So, Peggy, can you share some examples of how NetSuite integrates the fundraising and accounting functions? Sure. So if you recall um, on how I described NetSuite, we are one Mm -hmm. system, or one would say one database, right? Mm -hmm. Right. so it's no longer such a thing as different function, but one place. Mm-hmm. Um, so when we think of merging end-to-end operation, we think of kind of this single business application where it's all integrated okay. together. So you're not only going to have your nonprofit accounting, but you can also uh, manage your donors, right? Uh, you, mm-hmm. you know, whoever you, you major donor, you you know, you list serve all of those constituents that help you run and and are the reason why you are running your operations on a day-to-day basis. You can also, if you have an inventory, let's say you know a lot of nonprofit have an income by selling um, various goods. You can again p- put that on NetSuite. Uh, we also have an e- e-commerce function. So what we look at as we think of Oracle NetSuite is that again that burden of uh, maintaining just multiple system, just into one system. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you um, as I think of an example maybe to share to make it more concrete, um, one that comes to mind is Food for the Hungry. Um, mm-hmm. It's a, you know, obviously a global organization. Uh, and I just mm-hmm. realized I keep thinking of food examples, so I apologize for that. It's lunchtime for me. Oh, <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> I keep having oh, that food for me. Examples. <laughs> <laughs> <That's very funny>. uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> so Food for the Hungry uh, is obviously a, a global nonprofit that um, that serves many uh, local countries as well. Uh, you know, Ethiopia, mm-hmm. Rwanda, Uganda, they, they're everywhere. But Food for the Hungry Canada decided to um, move from multiple system to one system. So as you think about integrating that fundraising and accounting piece together, and, and, and what they share is they're able, you know, thanks to this ability of putting everything in one system, they've been able to grow by 10% annually uh, their fundraising income because wow. they, they have a much more personalized uh, communication approach since they have a central donor database. Um, mm-hmm. So, again, you know, when we're in a day-to-day and, and we're busy as nonprofit leaders, uh, we, we might not prioritize those type of initiatives, mm-hmm. but I can't, you know, I can't undermine how important it is to use the right technology. And it's not for everybody. It, you know, it, it, the timing is in essence. Uh, Food mm-hmm. for the Hungry Canada was ready, and I think they'd be able to leverage that technology um, and make sure they involve the right stakeholder as well. Uh, because mm-hmm. when you think of you know, technology change, you want to make sure that um, you have the right champions in the organization to be able to undertake that. Okay, that's interesting. So it sounds to me like you only have to enter the data one time and the NetSuite pulls it where it needs to go, whether it's for accounting purposes, fundraising purposes, or tracking outcomes. You know, that's the way it sounds. I have not used the software, but but it uh-huh. just sounds that way to me. It sounds good when you hmm. say it. I wish it was that simple. <laughs> it does sound... <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, it, it's like anything else. Think about, um, you know, when you run a nonprofit, you are constantly collecting data, right? Mm-hmm. And you're constantly right. as well 
sharing data with the people that care about the cause. So I wouldn't say per se it's a one time, uh, but it's ongoing. I think in a non-profit sector, we have this opportunity to start leveraging data and analyzing data to maybe be- make better decisions. Um, mm-hmm. So it, it's, it, I think it's also about if you have a large organization. So in my world, when I was um, running my nonprofit, when I was running Was Earth, we were dealing with a lot of volunteers, right? Mm-hmm. And we had volunteers reaching out to our community. At the time, we had 80,000 members globally in our online platform. So imagine, mm-hmm. you know, it was a large scale. Oh, wow. And <laughs> we were looking for a central place where – Uh, we would have kind of a community leaders and most active engaged members, um, con- mm-hmm. you know, connect with other members. But we wanted we wanted to be able to track because again, those are where like an engagement touch that would allow us to then identify who are the people that respond the most because those people obviously care about the cause and then might be a potential donor, right? So it's able to mm-hmm. bring it together. Um, so I think as I think of technology and how we leverage it for a mission, um, I think it's, one, it's not one time, it's ongoing. You know, we, we constantly mm-hmm. have to... Hello? Oh. Hello, Peggy? Yes, I think it went silent. Oh, okay. This was yes, a moment yes, of reflection yes. for every listener out there. This was a, a 30-second reflection time as we explore technology for yes. social change. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And, and I thank you so much um, for, for hanging in there. Um, so it sounds to me, too, like you really, you know, once you get NetSuite, there's really not a need to actually purchase another fundraising software to, to try to integrate it. Sounds like you have fundraising modules as well. That is right. Um, like I said, what, what we tend to recommend um, is first, you know, depending on the size of the nonprofit, obviously the conversation may be slightly different. Um, mm-hmm. But I think for any nonprofits of, of smaller size, and smaller size can be defined differently, especially I understand you have a global audience here. So, um, you know, if I, if, I, if I were to think of uh, any nonprofit under, let's say, four or five million, which, by the way, there's a lot of nonprofits under uh, that revenue threshold, um, right. you know, we would recommend that you use Oracle NetSuite first for running your day-to-day financials. Right. Get your okay. financial app and running. Get familiar with the software and the technology. And then once you get comfortable, then start expanding your use of the technology for your donor management, right, for your, okay. your, your fundraising purposes. Um, and the reason why it's important is uh, undertaking any technology change takes a lot of time and effort. Uh, so you want to make mm-hmm. sure that the right – People in your organization are using it and adopting it. You don't want to be uh, pushing technology <laughs> just for the sake of pushing it. Um, right. And I think as well, once you tie it, and I think that was kind of the way you open up the, the podcast here, which is the ability to tie kind of a financial with a day-to-day program, which I think we don't mm-hmm. do enough in the number of sector, right, because we're so busy running those right. operations. Um, so get the financial up and running first then expand your use. Um, you know, if I were to think of uh, when I was a child and I would go to a candy store, you know, it gets, mm-hmm. at first you're like, oh, oh my God, so many candy in that candy store. You get excited, <laughs> right? And then it gets overwhelming. Right. So you go from excitement to being overwhelmed and then you start looking at, you know, the right side and then you, you start making sense of it. So we'll think NetSuite is a five star. You know, you can have it all. It's exciting, but mm-hmm. it's going to be over, it might be overwhelming at first because there's so much, so many candies. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's important, it's important first to get your financial set and running. We've been serving over 1,000 nonprofits globally. We know what's been working and what has not. Our leading uh, practices are pretty amazing. Um, mm-hmm. And then, you know, expand your use. Okay, great. Thanks. 
All right. I want to remind our listening audience that you're listening to Nonprofit View, and we're speaking with Peggy DeVette. She's the Senior Director of Social Impact for Oracle NetSuite. We'll now take questions from our listening audience in chat room. So if you haven't had a chance to post in our chat room, now is the time. The call-in number is 347-884-8121. Again, that number is 347-884-8121. If you are listening and you happen to be looking at the episode page, that number, I believe, is in the top top left-hand corner of the episode page. And I see someone has been listening um, since we started. Um, this person's phone number is area code 508-450-1639. I'm going to go to your mic and see if if you have a question or comment. Sometimes people call just so they can hear a little better. Sometimes people call because they have questions. So I'm about to make your mic live, and if you have any questions or comments, please, um, if you could, share with us. Caller, did you have any comments or questions? Hi, I was curious about how you received the product uh, donation from the state. I'm sure, um, I know we were going to cover that later on, but Peggy, if you wanted to share, you know, share with us, you know, a little bit now as to how uh, we could go about getting product donations. Sure, absolutely. Uh, thank you uh, for asking that question. Um, so, far and foremost, the first thing we look at is: Are you a registered uh, charity or nonprofit in your home country? So, in the mm-hmm. case of the U.S., this will be the equivalent of a 501c3. Right? Different countries have different um, <clears throat> registration methodology. Um, but basically, number one, are you a registered charity in your home country? Secondly, we would want to make sure you're not already a current customer of NetSuite, right, to make sure there's no uh, conflict of interest right there. Um, mm-hmm. Thirdly, we're looking at, uh, obviously, and it, it sounds obvious, but it's not always the case, which is we are looking for nonprofits or social enterprises that are able to articulate the social impact. You know, what are they trying to achieve? Why are they in existence for? It's important for us that we support um, charities that have a mission towards um, the better good. And then finally, there's another element which may be unique to us, which is around um, the capacity element, which um, mm-hmm. is the organ- does the organization have the capacity to implement um, a software like Oracle NetSuite? And when we think of capacity, we think of it of multiple fold. Um, does that nonprofit have the expertise? So are there any uh, technology champion? Are there any uh, paid staff that have technical expertise? Or do you maybe have a volunteer, a champion volunteer that understands technology or software implementation? If not, do you have um, a board member maybe, or is the executive director a champion of technology? And the reason we ask those type of questions is because we we have learned over the years that if you don't have a champion in your organization that would help with that technology change, the likelihood of failing is pretty high. Um, mm-hmm. for, for our listeners here, I don't know if our listeners are familiar to N10, the Nonprofit Technology Network, an amazing nonprofit mm-hmm. uh, that helps build capacity uh, around nonprofit and technology in America, but they also have a global reach. Um, so I had kind of done some research a few years back, and I think the survey that came back was showing that 50% of nonprofits fail in their technology implementation. So this is no. why we decided at Oracle NetSuite to uh, put a lot of emphasis on technical capacity. Um, so uh, when one applies to a software a technology donation, they will be asked questions around expertise, uh, do they have any champions, and also the time. Um, if you believe that you can uh, implement a new technology in 10 or 20 hours, well, we do not recommend you come to a Netsuit Oracle. Right? <laughs> we want to make sure that you're going to be mm-hmm. committed not only to implement but to train. Um, another thing that's fascinating to me as I reflect on 
uh, my technology years when I was in the nonprofit sector, is we sometimes tend to make decisions and not involve the end user. And what I mean by the end right. user is if you have a person, a pay person, or a volunteer person, it doesn't matter, that enters data for your fundraising campaigns on a day-to-day -day on your CRM, right? Did you involve mm -hmm. them in your decision? <laughs> Uh, because those are you guys that are going to be using the technology, right? So, um, right. so to make you know to summarize uh, for a caller here, thank you again for the question. So uh, you know the requirements for a software donation is you need to be a registered charity in your home country. Uh, you must not be an existing NetSuite customer. Um, we will ask mm -hmm. you to articulate your social impact through uh, your mission statement, and finally we will have you fill up a questionnaire to better understand your organizational capacity. Uh, as we strongly believe that if, we, if you're not ready, we do not want to encourage you to take, undertake our call NetSuite. Um, mm -hmm. And for the scholar, you know, if you want to get more details, you can go to www.netsuite.com slash social impact. Okay, thank you for that. I'm going to also, you know, after we're done, I'm going to upload that to this episode in the comment section, you know, so when people download it, they can have it as well. So so thank you for that, Peggy. I, I love that. And caller, did you have any more questions? Was your question yeah, okay? Yeah, very helpful. Thank you. Oh, okay. Awesome. Thank you so much for calling and listening and, and hanging in there. Um, and please continue to listen. We have, you know, a few more things to share with you. And again, thank you. All righty, so I, I think that was a very good question to segue into, you know, the next questions we were going to have, um, and we were basically going to talk about the criteria that you were going to use and um, a minimum level of capacity. So I'm assuming that when people fill out the application, there's some sort of assessment and, and a rating sheet that goes goes along with that assessment to help you determine, or is it more a touchy, feely, um, gut feeling? You know, we know this type of organization could benefit, and we know these types of characteristics might work. So, mm -hmm. so what's, your, um, what's, what's your approach? Right. I mean, we can't get away from the touchy feeling. I think, you know, having been in industry mm -hmm. for so many years, um, Mm -hmm. You do, and I've been there myself. Um, you know, mm -hmm. having to decide on one technology to take. Um, you know, part part of the, the whole technology element as well is finding out what our peers sometimes are using. Right, when you um, mm -hmm. when you're an executive director or when you have to undertake such decision, you often rely on trusted sources. You other executive director, um, you know, peers or board members that may, may recommend um, what you should be taking. So uh, if we think mm -hmm. of the capacity and what got me excited when I joined Oracle NetSuite is the fact that we mm -hmm. were committed to understand what that meant and also how do you mm -hmm. define success when you give away technology um, to nonprofits. You. So we build a, a capacity model, an assessment model, uh, because we thought it was important to understand what does it mean to be successful around technology? And that question may differ depending on who you talk to, and uh, either from the, not the, the perspective of a board member or a leader of a nonprofit or a, a part of a new mission like our call NetSuite. Um, we really see ourselves as, as, as partners with nonprofit, not just as vendors, simply because mm -hmm. we want to take them through that journey, and we think that this journey is more than just, hey, get this technology donation. It's a journey it's where you not only um, give away a technology, but you help them uh, thrive on it. And, and thriving for me uh, is about they don't have to worry anymore about the software, but they can worry about the mission mm -hmm. and how they can help more people and, and scale their day-to-day their, their -day work. Um, so as I think about uh, you know, the minimum level of capacity, um, when we when we consider organizations that apply, um, so I've talked a little bit about it. I've talked about the the idea of having uh, individuals championing uh, mm -hmm. that change, whether it's a board member, an active volunteer. Because we have a, we have volunteer-run organizations that 
um, you know, are leveraging NetSuite uh, for the mm-hmm. for the mission. Uh, it could be an executive director. We look at the, you know, the, the resources of the nonprofit, whether that's time, whether that's money, or whether that's expertise. So those are very important to us. We look at the commitment, and we also ask a very important question, which is, do you have a current problem with your financials? If you don't, mm-hmm. then maybe this is not the right time to come to NetSuite. So do you have a problem that you want to solve? And then are you ready to solve it now? Um, as nonprofit leaders, there's always a lot of issues. I mean, I had a running list, you know, but are we ready to tackle it now? It's another important piece, um, especially when you talk about um, undertaking financial changes. You have your hand of fiscal year, so when, you know, do you want to run two systems at the same time? So the timing is also a big element of that. Um, mm-hmm. And then we've been able over the years to uh, gather a lot of data and better understand uh, what success looks like for a product. And I mm-hmm. think a lot of it is also relevant to any und- technology that you may undertake. It's not just about Oracle NetSuite. Uh, and for listeners, I also want to recommend another resource uh, that I was uh, that was key to my success and as, as an executive director and as I was thinking about technology for social change. Um, Idealware, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know if our listeners okay. are familiar with yeah. this resource, but okay. Idealware, okay. um, mm-hmm. yeah, great resources as well. Um, they have a couple of um, workbooks that really uh, allows you to think through uh, your decision making as you think about undertaking your you know, whether it's your accounting software or, um, you know, your any other type of software. They just launched a, uh, a paper, actually, uh, around uh, accounting software, I think, a few weeks ago that I would highly recommend. Okay. And my, my mind just blank, so I apologize for that, but I'll be able to send it to you, Valerie, and send you the mm-hmm. resource for that. Okay, awesome. And I will make sure that I post the link to it on this episode page for further reference, you know, when people download it. And you know what, as I listen to you, I'm really, really intrigued. It sounds to me like you have two or three levels, you know, I, I may have missed something, levels of engagement, for lack of a better word, um, in your giving. You have product donations, you have, I guess, discounted software, and then you have this more intensive uh, program where you combine the software donation with intensive training. And, and I guess I'm, I'm more interested at this point in the capacity building with the training. Um, what would you say would be, I guess, the ideal size of an organization or description of an organization that would go through such a program? Mm-hmm. Um, let me cl- clarify a little bit the, uh, what you described here. So um, the the journey with Oracle Nesuit start with a software donation in the um, social impact group. So first you're going to apply for the software donation. And if you get accepted, you become, in a sense, part of a um, you know, the social impact community, if you will. Um, and mm-hmm. you basically have access to a technology for either highly discounted or for free, depending on the size of your revenue and, and what you do. Uh, so, And once you're part of the, the social impact community in our world, then you have access to all those amazing resources, which is the pro bono, which is as well um, some of the trainings I've mentioned uh, and the self-led cohort that we have. Um, and, and that journey is about really um, helping the nonprofits not only implement NetSuite once mm-hmm. they go through a software donation, but then uh, then then use it to actually excel in the mission. Um, mm-hmm. So I just wanted to, to clarify that piece. Uh, do you mind repeating the, the second part of the question, and then I'll be able to answer if you don't mind. Yeah, I was just trying to yeah get a sense for what the ideal – client or prospect would be for such a program. So if right. you're okay. yeah. just starting uh-huh. out, that, that probably wouldn't be appropriate, right? Maybe you could qualify for a product donation, but maybe right. not so much for the more intensive capacity building, which I understand would require, what is it, 
10 hours a week or 20 hours a week engaged right. in? So, in yeah, in yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it, they're not separated. What it is is when you apply for the software donation, right, so if you, mm-hmm. if you apply to get NetSuite, we will evaluate if you have the capacity to implement, right? If you if you don't have the basically the the financial means to um, to get NetSuite and pay for it. Mm-hmm. Um, so what's what's the ideal? You know, why was, why should a nonprofit consider applying? Well, are they right. looking? Are they are they starting a new nonprofit? And do they have an ambitious mission where they want to scale and 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 they're thinking big? Yes, why not? I mean, you can start from no, – okay, actually, great. if you don't have to – if you don't have to migrate data, it actually makes the implementation easier, as a matter of fact. <laughs> uh, so it's totally feasible. Right, right. Um, we, we've seen small nonprofits that may be around 200000 U.S. dollars implement NetSuite. Um, okay? So I think it's mm-hmm. not so, – okay. the size does not matter so much. I think part of it is um, – the expertise behind who is applying. If you have no expertise in technology, no expertise whatsoever, you just started, you, you, you're non-profit, um, and you have no time, mm, would I recommend it? I said, maybe not. But let me flip mm-hmm. that around and say, if you just started a non-profit, maybe you were in the corporate sector and you decided to branch and start your, your own Cyber 1C3 in the U.S., um, you have a lot of technical expertise, um, you either mm-hmm. know NetSuite, maybe, or you know of an, in another software, well, then maybe that can be very appropriate. So, again, a lot of it depends on do you, do you, are you in need for financial software? Are you ready to mm-hmm. move from QuickBooks to NetSuite? Are you ready to move from Excel to NetSuite? Um, and do you have the time? When, you know, any product donations, uh, you're going to need time to implement if you're not willing to pay for right. implementation. No, we work with incredible partners um, you know, we have also uh, implementation on site at NetSuite, right? Um, mm-hmm. So we have many avenues in which one could consider how they want to implement NetSuite. Um, mm-hmm. But that the resources needed will be either the equivalent of time, expertise, or money, if that makes sense. Okay, great. And it sounds to me like a part of that equation is commitment. So when you absolutely, when you're, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you're assessing capacity, the commitment can probably outweigh, it sounds mm-hmm. to me, um, what That's we would right. look at I mean, as traditional <laughs> measures. Absolutely. And think about, you know, I don't know if you've ever found Ray's, but, um, you know, oh, if, yeah. if you talk at major, <laughs> if you, if you talk at major donors, you're not going to go to them and say, give me a million dollars. Right. right, right. You are going to nurture them. You're going to get to know them. You, you, uh, you know, you'll make sure they align with your your mission and they are excited about your mission. Um, you'll you'll try maybe to engage with them so they start helping and then they so engage and and they feel part of it that then they'll start donating money. Well, in some ways, technology I think needs to be treated the same way. You know, if you evaluate any type mm-hmm. of technology, um, it's not just like a one thing. You get it and then you're done. It is a, a commitment, and especially if you're trying mm-hmm. to look, and I think that's the way we started here, right? We, I mean, I've always been interested about the intersection of technology for social change when technology enables your mission. I don't mm-hmm. want to be worried about my technology. I want to be worried about my mission and my program. Um, right. So, again, I think if, if you think of technology that way, yes, absolutely, you should do your research, uh, you should understand what are you need in your nonprofit right now. You should make sure you get your mm-hmm. nonprofit board buy in. Um, and Oracle NetSuite, we're going to be here. You know, we're going to be here for a long time. We've been here for a long time. We have no intention to go anywhere. Um, and and we want to support nonprofits of all sizes globally. And that's really a commitment. So I feel very comfortable sometimes telling nonprofit, if you're ready, don't just think about it and maybe talk work to work on this piece and then come back to us because we'll always be here, but we want you to be successful. Mm-hmm. Okay, awesome. Now I'm, I'm curious. So if you were admitted into the next cohort for the capacity building, when, when would you need to start submitting the application? You know, is it too late to do it now, or do, is there another funding round that's coming up later no, in the year? Yeah, that's a great question. So I don't have the dates in front of me, so I apologize in advance. But I think 
So right now what you're referring to is our uh, financial accelerated cohort, which is unfortunately yeah. just as of now just a U.S. Uh, initiative that we have. We, we are working mm-hmm. on making mm-hmm. it more global. So I just want to be thoughtful of your global audience here. Um, but for basically um, U.S. Um, nonprofits, uh, what we offer is a self-implementation uh, cohort where you, you mm-hmm. would be joining a, an, another group of nonprofit leaders uh, and they're literally, it's, it's about implementing NetSuite for your basic financials. It's a 12-week program currently. Mm-hmm. Um, we try to run those, um, we, we're trying to run it um, uh, in alignment with the end of fiscal year. So then um, our non don't have to uh, basically maintain two door systems at the same time, which if you come mm-hmm. from an Excel spreadsheet or no system, that's fine. But if you are basically transferring from a, a legacy system, it, get, it becomes a little bit more complicated. Um, so a new quarter, unfortunately, I apologize. I don't have the date in front of me right now. But we run it every quarter, so every three months. Um, so, mm-hmm. you know, you will not be missing the boat depending on when you apply. I think most importantly, okay. uh, especially for that self-implementation cohort, you know, mm-hmm. it, it's a big time commitment. You know, you are self-implementing. Right. Uh, so while we'll guide you and help you thanks to our leading practices and, and we provide almost that support because it's a, a cohort system, uh, it, it requires a lot of time. So um, if you apply to a software donation, you automatically do not get accepted for a cohort. That's an additional eligibility there because we want to make sure that you are ready to undertake that, if that makes sense. And, okay. and we, yes, are, we will be expanding um, that initiative globally obviously because it's an amazing um, uh, service that we offer to uh, nonprofits, and we want to make sure that everybody can leverage it, if you will. And, you know, again, you know, we have the self implementation code, but you can also uh, implement through a NetSuite experts, a, a product mm-hmm. team. So there's many ways one can implement um, NetSuite. It all depends about mm-hmm. the, the size and who you are and where you, or how fast also you want to, you know, you have implementation being done. Okay, so when you say self-implement, you're providing what a workbook, and people kind of take the lessons at their own pace, or will there be a volunteer within the NetSuite um, employee um, network that will? Yeah, that that's an excellent it. question. So, yeah, thank you for asking this question. Yes, yeah. so when you um, when you go through the financial accelerated cohort. So it's self-implementation. In, in, yes, in sense, it's a workbook you follow, but then there are live sessions when um, mm-hmm. all the nonprofits that have been accepted will uh, work together and exchange best practices or challenges. So it's a mixture oh, of uh, live and self-content. Um, and then as well, what we do is um, if you get accepted to, um, to that, you also partnered with a, one of our pro bono employees so somebody with mm-hmm. that expertise that um, can be there to support you as well. And it goes back to, I think, what's unique about a program is um, not only you have access to technology, uh, right, to help for your mission, but you also mm-hmm. have access to expertise through a pro bono program. Um, we also run a, a quarterly pro bono program, um, so basically every three months globally, where, um, you mm-hmm. know, we ask our nonprofits where they need support. Um, and then we mm-hmm. um, we ask our employees who is available, and it's literally a matchmaking. It's a lot of fun, and it, it's allowing our employees to uh, be able to give back through the expertise. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then for the nonprofits, imagine the experience to be able to have experts giving, you know, giving away time. Um, yeah. And you know, as I listen to you talk, I'm thinking your background in creating networks. <laughs> I think really comes in handy. I think this is such a natural process for you, you know, to pull together cohorts of people from different backgrounds who have a shared interest in technology to improve outcomes and to improve efficiency. So once you are a part of the cohort, is the cohort geographically based or do you um, become part of a, a community that could be, you know, depending on the program, it could be, a national cohort or an international cohort, and you get to network across state lines. <clears throat> right. No. So in, in its current form, um, it's 
uh, US and it's a virtual, so it's not physical. Uh, okay. But I think you, you, you nailed it right there in the sense that um, the vision for um, my group is basically to to bring everybody globally together, but also make it, I think it's, it's the uh, intersection of global and local that's so rich. Um, mm-hmm. So imagine if one could support each other within their local region, but then have access to the global wealth of information. Um, yeah, I love there it. Is, there is something to say about uh, locally. and So when I think locally now, I think U.S. versus, let's say, Asia Pacific or Europe, you know, depending on the region, uh, geographic region, the challenges are slightly different uh, when it comes to NetSuite. And operationally, you may run your nonprofit uh, differently. But yet there's some mm-hmm. best practices that can be, uh, uh, you know, shared globally. Um, so I think it's that balance of the local and global that's so rich, but yes, that you have to nurture. Um, I think what's also important is, you know, we're dealing with uh, people that are busy, right? Uh, when I yeah. have my own nonprofit, you know, you, you are always busy. So how do you ensure that um, we're here to support, but we're not yet another burden? I think that's that's super important. Um, in some ways, my success, as I think of and as I reflect of of my group and, and what we achieve is, our success is almost like if they don't have to think about NetSuite, Oracle NetSuite, then that means we're successful because they're running the day-to-day operation successfully and they're able to make strategic decisions based on data they collect. Um, but, yes, I, I do have a strong passion for bringing people together. Um, and sometimes it is lonely when you run those small nonprofits, uh, you know, oh. <laughs> only making the right decisions. I know. Um, and then it's also, I think there's something to say about being able to reflect on decisions that may be the wrong one. But, you know, how can we almost fail a little faster, reflect, and then move on to the next? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's excellent. Okay, so we've come to the end of our show, and I'd like to thank Peggy Duvet, Senior Director of Social Impact for Oracle NetSuite, for being a guest on today's show. So before we go, Peggy, do you care to share any parting thoughts and tell our listening audience how they can get in touch with you? Um, absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for listening today. It's It's been such a pleasure to um, to kind of reflect on what I do my, myself uh, as I'm sharing mm-hmm. all of this and this journey, my personal journey. Um, I want to encourage you know everybody to reflect on this conversation, you know, Take the time to assess your technology and, and um, leverage all the amazing resources that are out there. Uh, obviously, I, I'm proud of my company, um, and I'm excited to be um, taking us to even a bigger scale. But there's many companies out there, so you know, do your research, talk to your peers, leverage what we have. Um, if you are interested in Oracle NetSuite, we are more than happy to help you uh, through your journey. And um, uh, Twitter handle is NS Social Impact. Uh, again, our website is uh, www.netsuite.com slash social impact. Um, and feel free to share my, my email as well, pduvet.netsuite.com, mm-hmm. and we'll be more than happy mm-hmm. to help you. And finally, thank you for uh, our listeners. Thank you for the work you do. Um, you know, we need mm-hmm. more of you out there. And Valerie, thank you for oh, convening us you. together. Uh, I'm excited about... Um, the, the initiative that you're launching, and I'm, I'm definitely going to try to be present for the lunch. Oh, awesome. Thank you. I, I definitely will be following up, you know, for, for some questions, and um, I, I really appreciate you again. And two, I, I want to follow up with you to see if you might be able to provide some some programming for that community, but that's, that's another conversation <laughs> offline. But um, I, I thank you so much. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All righty, so I want to thank our listening audience for listening to Nonprofit U today. The show will be available for download within about an hour, and be sure to tune in next week. We're going to have a really, really interesting discussion on fundraising, and our guest will be Stacey Hardman Lang, CEO of Lang Capital Group. All righty, I shall talk to you later. And I will follow up with you at another time. All right, Peggy, thank you. Bye. Au revoir. Au revoir.